So, so that was your meetup, the one in, where was it? Was it in Mexico City or? Mexico City, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, it was Mexico City. So I organized that, that it was like publishing on three meetup groups because the Bitcoin meetup, the Bitcoin cash meetup, and the group of the Bitcoin embassy bar that was a, the, the place where the, ah, the, place. Okay, the speech yeah, yeah, yeah. was. So it was, and it, it was full. The, the bar was crowded. It, no more people. But people were, were standing up. Some people go and, and keep standing up there. And we talk about uh, the Lighting Network. We talk, uh, well, the, I'm not especially the, per, the best person to, to talk about it. So I invited people that have a great knowledge about that. So they speak about the technology, the, all those things. Then I took my the microphone, uh, microphone I, I spoke about the Bitcoin Cash, well, the philosophy, how fast it, it goes, uh, all the fundamentals in probably seven minutes. I, I, I wanted to be that fast. And then the, the transmission uh, of that event Ended and, and, and then was that your the same speech that you always give the one that you've been giving for the last five years or or, or more years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's the same speech that I I have in my memory. <laughs> right, it was right. just yeah because uh, yeah the, the people that have uh, more than five years or seven years in in this we don't have to change our speech. The fundamentals are the same that we started many years ago and yeah. and we don't have to change our speech. So right. Bitcoin Cash has the same fundamentals that we always uh, spoke from, from the beginning. No? When, when my brother told me about Bitcoin, that's exactly. the main thing, the same thing that I'm telling same you to other people. So, yeah, yeah. so it's, a, it's, it's the same thing. So after the, the three speeches, we it, it, it ends uh, the, the recording and then we take uh, two lines of people. Well, it was like 10 people from Bitcoin. It was not people from Bitcoin. It was people that were in the bar. Ah, okay. So they, who wants to go with lighting? Okay, I want to go. So you go to that side. Who wants to go with Bitcoin Cash? Okay, we need three more people here. We need four more people. Okay, when we were 10, 10, then uh, we have two minutes to teach each one of the people how to receive and send uh, Satoshis. 10 minutes. From each, each group. Yeah. We started with four, 40,000 sats. So one group download, downloaded the, the Bitcoin.com wallet and the other group downloaded the blue wallet that is uh, on, on Lighting Network. And they, they last like probably 20 minutes in order to, to teach 10 people how to use that because it's more difficult to to teach how to to send an invoice and calculate the fee so it has enough the, the person that's going to send you money you don't know the, how many sats are on their wallet so you have to to calculate no if the the line start with 40,000 sats minus the commission the next one have to, to send less and less mm -hmm. and less, no? That takes more time. And the, the race was very simple. The first line that could send to each of the people on the line sats and arrive to the last one on the line wins. No, no, it doesn't matter how many sats will come to the, to the final, no? And as you can see in a, a recorder that is published on YouTube, both teams were very excited just before the race. They were basically jumping because we really know who's going, who's, who, who team is going to win, no? <laughs> which technology would work. And as you can see on that recording, the Bitcoin Cash was easy, smooth. One person teach the other and, and the, the money goes from one wallet to another. And finally, we ended the 10 transactions in, it was like uh, 140 seconds. Right, yeah. And the other, in that period, the Lighting Network team could not make 
non transaction. It was a problem with the wallet. It's not related too much with the lighting per se. The blue wallet has a, a, a bad design and the QR code doesn't have uh, the white area uh, on the on the on the perimeter of that QR code. So on the dark mode of the blue wallet, you cannot read it. Well, well some read it. It may be an iPhone 12 or iPhone X can read that kind of <laughs> cure, but not there was there was not the, the first step. <laughs> They, don't, they, they they cannot do that. So it was a win-win. But I I am already talked to to my friends of the Bitcoin community and tell me that when you they are ready, we we make another race. Let's wait for that new upgrade of the wallet, and we may will make another race because I'm completely sure that Bitcoin Cash is faster, easier. And we will win again. I I no, think um, for for that to be a, a a fair race, if they're going to do it again, they should make sure to do it with the uh, non custodial wallet. I don't I don't think blue I think blue wallet is custodial, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's custodial. Yeah. So, so that's, it's even like though, paying even people though... with PayPal or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably will be good to to use uh, another wallet, but. Maybe Moon, they, they, they talk about Moon wallet is a good wallet for, for that. So it, for me, it's, it's the same. It, 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 takes, it takes 12, two times more time to to make an invoice right? and to send it that just push the money from one wallet to another using right. Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. So it's, I even, think- Even with the custodial wallet. Yeah, and, and even if we don't win, it's, all the meetups are very fun. That's good. That's <laughs> we, good. That's, good. that's more important. Yeah. Yes, that's great. That's well, why thanks. I love to make meetups. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good good story. Um, so uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video, but it was it was pretty fun. It looked like everybody was having a good time, so that's very nice. It's good to have that positivity and uh, not always fighting like we often do in crypto. Yeah. I, I had some questions. So uh, before we started the recording, um, Marco, you told us about uh, you're trying to do some adoption in a smaller town in Mexico and uh, focus on building the local economy instead of uh, a few shops in a very large city, um, especially like Mexico City, which is ridiculously large. So I had some some specific questions um, uh, like what... What are your big, uh, like you said, you have to find people who are aligned uh, with freedom to, to get started. The, the people who are aligned with the, the value of the, the, the value proposition of Bitcoin Cash and it's easy and it's fast, but especially about freedom. Um, what are the other kind of difficulties that you that you are facing when you, when you try to do that? Uh, what, what is it that they uh, are interested in or not interested in? Well, the I, I don't know if it's the same problem that I I encounter in a small town compared mm -hmm. with the culture of the big town of the big mm -hmm. city. No, because the information is not the same that they receive in a city that in a small town is 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 not the same. And uh, probably in the rural rural areas, uh, I think there are more entrepreneur people. They they. They need something to to work, and and they they just started the business, so they are more more open. I think they are more hmm. open to, to to new things. So I think that that's good in the rural regions. Um, Mexico is has a, a I think a low inflation, so the argument of take the Bitcoin Cash money in order to protect your money from from the inflation is is not a good argument here mm -hmm. so we, i have to find then new arguments to in order to make a, a increment in the commerce uh, to to accept to accept to, in order to the commerce to accept bitcoin cash and i i am focusing on two well maybe three main main reasons the first one is that uh, there are a lot of benefits 
to receive money with Google Cash is no no fees to the bank. You don't have to pay the three or four percent. Mm. There is no chargeback. So the money that you receive is 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 yours, and uh, is easy. You no, know, it's fast and it's definitely. So there is is that that's a, that's good good things. Uh, the main object uh, objection for them is that okay, if I receive Bitcoin Cash, I I, I don't want to to hold Bitcoin Cash where I can change it for pesos. Mm -hmm. So for me in that town is obviously that I have to solve that problem, and I think it's going to be easy to have a, like a person with a WhatsApp and if a commerce want to change it, I just send a WhatsApp and that people will go to the commerce and and exchange that Bitcoin cash for Mexican pesos. In a small quantities, I think it will be not considered as a money laundering, no? because Mexico has a, a lot of uh, pressure and we have to, to keep that rule. We have to, to be legal. No? But uh, I think that in the long run, when the commerce have the confidence that they can change their money anytime with pesos easily, then in the long run, they will not change it because they will see that, that the Bitcoin Cash, even if the price is going up and down, it's, it's going to be good because uh, one year ago, we have like a five, 1,500 pesos per each Bitcoin Cash, and now we have 10,000. So every every commerce that do not change their money to Mexican pesos is like 80% up. So mm. maybe that will help to to make the people on the the people not to change their BCH and start to use it in that town to make a circular economy there. The second argument that I'm, I'm telling you and I'm using that is uh, the remittances. I, I'm sure that the the town, maybe the 40% of all the economy that goes inside that town came from people that were born in that town and then they go to the United States, they, they live there and they send money to their, to their parents or, or friends or her wife or whatever. So if that, and I can see that if the bank has a 40, 50 people outside in the street waiting for, for, for the cashier, we have uh, several companies that already Western Union and all, all other, they have a lot of people. So I think that when they learn how to send Bitcoin Cash uh, to their family and the Bitcoin fa and their family can go to any of the 100 stores to to pay it. that even though we don't make a lot of faults about that that will happen hmm. so that's the second reason why uh, uh, commerce will have to accept or it's going to be good for the commerce to accept because I believe in the voluntary always no always try to get benefit for what you are doing. And the third argument for me to, to go there is the tourism. That town is very beautiful town. They, they have mountains, rivers, lakes. It's very, very good. And many people go to that town to, to spend the weekend. There are like 40 hotels. And I think that uh, if, if it is a very original, argument so don't laugh it's, it's very strange but I, I i believe it will work in mexico we have a big exchange it's called bitso.com they stated that they have already one million active accounts mexican accounts even though right now we have like three million because they go to brazil and argentina it's, it's bigger but in mexico they have one one million imagine one million people that go to the exchange and speculate and go up and down, but they do not have a real experience to, to mm -hmm. go to, to, to have a all the day paying a sandwich or ice cream or pay the hotel. So for me, the tourism argument is a good argument and probably it will work. That argument is good for all the community because if more tourism will go to the mountains and the lakes and the rivers, but also spend an afternoon learning how to 
use their their Bitcoin and spending their their Bitcoin cash in all the in several places is going to be a, like a like a experience argument. Come to this town and live the experience. No, after you go to the river, go on and and after they leave that experience. So the tourism argument is very important. I think it's good mm -hmm. for the town, good for the community, and and it's good for that. So I I started uh, I I pay for a logo. It's called the Crypto Pueblos in in Pueblo is town. So Crypto Town is is like a uh, it's going to be like a, I don't know, a certification. So if a, if a town have, I don't know specifically, you know, I haven't decided how many percentage of business already has said Bitcoin Cash uh, in that town, then that certification goes to that town. It's like, and I'm going to list the, the several towns that already got that certification. Mm -hmm. So the people that want to have the experience to go to a town and leave the experience to pay, they can see that list of, a, of that towns that already have that certification that I uh, evaluate and, and decide you can go to that town mm. also. So the first thing is to have one good town, one good experience, and then try to document that so that other people like me, there are a lot of crazy people, <laughs> will try to make that success on other towns and got that certification so cryptopueblos.com is is already online and oh. and i hope that in the future it's going to be better and and that's that would be that third argument the, the tourism argument so that's 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 what i i pretend to do here <laughs> that's great marco i want to ask you some questions you said people on exchanges there's there's so many accounts on exchanges and they're exchanging trading whatever and then, uh, but they've never had the experience. I think that's probably true. The the vast majority of people on exchanges have never actually used crypto, right? They've probably never made a crypto transaction, actually, just working on an exchange. They don't actually understand. And and I guess, um, I don't know, but but I have myself and then a lot of other people I have talked to, the first time they actually use crypto, they start to realize like, oh, this just works and I can actually use this for things. So um, yeah, that, that, that might work. Are you going to do something with uh, that exchange, the crypto soul? Uh, is it crypto soul? Is that right? The well, the, the, the exchange is called Bitso. B I T S O dot com. S O. Okay. I see. Bitso. Bitso. I know probably all the owners of, you know, the original owners of that. Right. I have, relation because already I have, but um, I don't know if they are, they, probably, I don't know, I haven't thought that they might, they 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 have given money for maybe a five or 10 meetups that I already done, especially mm -hmm. in the beginning. I, I They pay for the drinks and, and, and cookies, no? Maybe if I ask them, to to join this initiative of that town, maybe they will help. Them. It will be good. Yeah, maybe, maybe I, they will I, ask I, you to I, do I, other other coins or make it. I don't know if, how they will demand to do it. But yeah, I, I I always believe that in the long run, these types of initiative must be sustainable by themselves. Hmm. Is is not is not in the long run. Is it, it will be not enough money to subsidize and pay and pay and pay and pay. Just, I, I believe just to grow that static and gather some merchants is good to, to, to invest. But in the long run, that has to be sustainable. So I think that uh, probably in the town, the people that are, that are, that are going to be invited to, to make the change, you know, to work as, an, as a personal exchange, you know, like a sheer to change pesos for for make Bitcoin cash and otherwise, no, to they have to win. So that money will help them to to keep spreading the word and 
I, I believe that we all we always have to to think on the long sustainable models. No, at the beginning, of course, someone has to to invest. Right. No, but, uh, has, but, yeah, like you, know. you said, break the 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 static uh, friction. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, I wanted to ask you another question, Marco. Um, so you said the three uh, benefits or three different approaches will make it attractive to to people. But let's say after a few years, they are already let's say they start to use Bitcoin Cash. So do you think Bitcoin Cash or crypto is actually going to help that town? It's going to help those people? How do you think it's going to help them? Why Why is it good for them? Uh, of course, it's, it's, I think that that town is going to be have a greater economy. I think that it's going to be easier for them to... Do you know that the, I, I think that it's not... It's cheap... To, get, to gather knowledge, but it's very expensive than the ignorance. So all that information that we're going to give to the to, to all the merchants on that town, and also all the people that work on those stores that also are the people that live in that town. So it's the, like a community. I think that in two years, two years, five years, they they will be in a better technological shape for another technology that arrive or another opportunity. Let's see, probably imagine that Mexico have a Mexican digital person, no? And the people in that town will be far, far advanced to, to gather or to, to take that opportunities, no? So I think that uh, even though the Bitcoin Cash just works there, uh, the knowledge that they have, the, 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 that we will bring to that people, to those people, is going to be good, good, good for them. Mm. It's, it's, it's going to be. Imagine a person that is a web designer and started to receive to Bitcoin Cash as a payment. Mm. They can live in that small town in the middle of the mountain. So it's for all 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 means. It's going to be good for people, and it's going to be good for the government inside that that town. Uh, for everyone, is good. I think that uh, it's good okay. for for everyone. So I believe right, that we're making good things for 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 that. And hey, Vikram, I wanted to to ask you too about um. So you and and Zapit Wallet uh, do a lot of work um, with adoption, and then of course you have the exchange and everything. So do do you have the same same approach? Like, what is it that makes makes it interesting for people to start with crypto and then what makes them interested to actually start using it instead of just exchanging it or do, do you see the same same pattern in india or, or uh, which, which city are you in i forgot it's in in bangalore yeah yeah right 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 you guys are in bangalore so does do you see the same pattern there or yes uh, more or less similar and in a way that uh, the people who are driving here are actually more enthusiastic about Bitcoin Cash, uh, which is helping, you know, some merchants because there are a huge number of merchants here uh, and more people who know what is going on are still not interested in taking crypto. It's because they're in a new space, right? They're, we are asking them to come out to crypto even though they just heard a little bit about Bitcoin. Mm. Uh, they understand it. The more they understand it, they don't want it because just appear, they're like anything new, they just don't want to like uh, rush into it, right? Some people who understand really the technology and the person who's approaching is also very nice to them in a way. Uh, then he he has like because they're all like local people who these guys go to those shops and that's how they are approaching them. It's nothing like going from the ordinary and going to the new place and finding them. They've already seen them before. So with that explanation, uh, most people are like, okay, let's try it out. Maybe they're, they're expecting more people to use. Uh, if they had more people using Bitcoin Cash in those shops which are accepting, maybe then that guy could have done some word of mouth and to other shops uh, to accept them. But because there's very little people who pay in it, uh, that kind of help is not happening for us where the, the merchants have an exciting story or, or something to say to others. Uh, that part is still missing is because nobody's really making payments with it. Mm. Only in our circle, in our group, 
so once the merchants that we have we kind of like always pay and then we all have that wallet so we're just changing value around uh, with each other uh, of course those merchants who are there are actually even uh, the ones who connect with other merchants because they hold a lot of uh, material they uh, they have big freezers and they hold this place is called be animal and they were on uh, uh, your uh, you know uh, to raise funds on the yeah on yeah the they use the flip starter to to raise some funds yeah so so these guys they are actually talking to a lot of other merchants they talk their products uh, and they are trying to push it to that to the other merchants and other users uh, but because we are all from that area we use it we use pay we paying every time and we go just for the sake of using bitcoin cash because there's no other way we can where we can still use it uh, we try to push the uh, in in new merchants that coming in glad they're coming in because that's giving us a little traction to showcase in the world that yes bitcoin cash is happening uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more users pay them now uh, hopefully once that starts Uh, we can see more and more more adoption probably happening with itself like you know this other merchants these are even even the meters he thinks yeah there is another alternative payment uh, because many people are holding it uh, maybe i should also start accepting it so that part may take some time i just uh, don't know why the merchants or the users here just don't want to use the payments mm. so probably because the alternatives are available Yeah, th- there's a big, um, right? There's a very big narrative in in crypto, you know, to just hold, to just hold it. So, um, yeah, maybe that discourages people from actually using it. I don't know. Um, but uh, I also wanted to ask. So, Marco said earlier that uh, uh, you know the the Mexican peso is is relatively stable. It doesn't have serious problems right now. Um, and in India, I think the the, the rupee is is um, is okay but but also the government is removing some of the cash right like taking some of the 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 cash out of circulation make the larger bills illegal and things like that does that kind of issue about the the government and control and do do people care about that kind of thing or it's just on the side they just use UPI and they don't they don't worry about it yeah they don't care about it they don't care uh, they just UPI and then uh, use the function is done much better now with UPI. Yeah, you just don't want the money part, the cash part being taken away. But of course, the cash holders and who are trying on the black part of it, which is trying to save on their tax, uh, they still want their cash to be used. They're still using it. Uh, with with uh, regards to crypto, yes, uh, because the alternative like uh, your, your UPI gives you that easy feature to just send in the same. Uh, like you said, Hodl is what they are all following, and it's is more of Bitcoin uh, followers there. You won't believe the amount of uh, people that I see on uh, Clubhouse. There are so many Indians in any Bitcoin talk. They are there, uh, but uh, the part that Bitcoin Cash is trying to do and things like that, it is very far from the Indians to understand that detail. Uh, they they are looking at a part where Bitcoin is a great asset for trading and things like that. So. Only Bitcoin is 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 understood. Uh, less of Bitcoin Cash, you know, because in the beginning, if you see Bitcoin, whatever it said is what we are following in Bitcoin Cash, right? So these people were not there then, and then they came in only at the time when Bitcoin had value after 2013. Mm. So the approach towards cryptocurrency is just as an asset, just as a trading tool, uh, just as uh, you know, a fancy new digital way of holding something which is beyond like garments and things. So they are happy to do that, but I guess the payment part of it is just the most of them not aware. The more important, the more they they understand. Even though they've heard a little bit about it in the asset class, now they understand. Yes, it, it will be the future of payments, and uh, I'm I'm very uh, surprised and also unaware before that you know so little about payments and so little about the use of money and understanding of money is there. Mm. Most people so. Uh, Educated, but I guess because the way the system worked in the past, uh, the the information about how money works and nothing has been taught to you, so you just don't look at crypto that way. Right. Uh, it's it's missing. It's missing right there. Even though the Indians go abroad working, 
So they are knowledgeable. They're only in two sectors, which is medical and uh, engineering. There's nothing in finance. People are mastered here. Oh. So it's hard for them to even, even like when I'm explaining, they're like, oh, okay. I get it. Like Money is money. <laughs> yeah, okay. Where, where Bitcoin Cash comes in, if they understand, then they, they love it. And that's when they know, okay, so it's different. And there, there are like a different sectors of crypto also where they can hold and use. Uh, it, it's it's slow, but it, it's happening. And also, like uh, Marco was saying about Mexico, uh, stability with rupees is far more higher than uh, like expected by the media guys, what they propose. Uh, that is that. Of course, in, in fuel, we see the, the, the price inflation quite high because of fuel, everything else is going up. Uh, it's kind of relative because every few years it happens, so people are like okay with it. Uh, of course, this time it's a little bit more, uh, but it's settling in slowly. And uh, the, the pandemic has just made them feel that yes, this just should. This is something which may happen because of the way the economy was uh, was being you know stopped mm. or, or slowed down because of the pandemic. Uh, they're thinking just because of that it's happening, not necessarily understanding that the government is also printing so much uh, and devaluing your money just to support the, the COVID situation. And because of that COVID, you know, you they're giving so many things free uh, to those uh, medical sectors uh, for, you know, admitting a patient was was because of COVID, then you get a lot of relief from the, from the government. So that money is used to that sector only. And of course, the rest of it of feeling is in inflation. Mm. So, so we get some followers, right? Okay, yeah. I, I was going to say those, um, all of those issues. So, g- generally, just my opinion is that uh, in in for for general adoption of just regular people, not not about business to business. That's a different issue. But for general adoption of 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 people to use it as payments, um. In my experience, people in, in rich countries or stable countries, uh, they typically don't care because right convenience is, is king. And if your banking and legacy finance system, if it does the basic things you need, then people just don't want to think about it. They don't, they don't need to think about it or they don't realize they need to, to think about it. So, so they don't. But, but where I have seen it work is there's always some people who who run into the there's these kind of invisible walls of the the financial system right and and most people don't know that they are there but one day they they just accidentally do something and they hit the wall and and the bank tells you oh y- you can't do that <laughs> you wanted to send money to your to your friend you can't you're not allowed to do that and or you, you know, I want to send money to to my family member in in Peru or something like that, right? And they say, "Oh no, 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 you can't do that. We don't know who you are. We don't know who they are." And then people realize, oh, "What? <laughs> this is my money." And then they're like, "Well, it's kind of your money. It's kind of not your money, <laughs> right?" So I don't know. Maybe there's some people like that, but yeah, in in stable stable countries, I think a lot of people don't realize the the walls that are around them. And and like you said, the the inflation, people think it's nothing until, right? Nobody 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 takes it seriously until they've already lost all the, yeah. until the nation's whole wealth is already inflated away, right? So yeah. If they find a loss in their uh, in the system of their money handling, and then they get an interest to find out more, that situation is what everybody is waiting for here. Yeah. Mm. Until that time, they're in their ease, they're in their comfort zone. So wherever they're paying with existing uh, channels, and they're just happy with that. Right. Uh, very few go into the technology part which uh, I do like because they are just buying it for the sake of trying it out. Mm. Uh, these experiences I get is just because of the, uh, you know, because of the sentiment or the use case of the users in my exchange compared to the prior one that I've built, where it is it's a, purely a trading platform where 
only traders come and they just fulfill their uh, need of trade. But here with the second platform that I have, which is for payments and value transfer and, and settlements, uh, you see that so much that we talk about, still only traders come and then try their hand in it. <laughs> just because they're buying it and selling it to a centralized place, they are taking advantage of the time zone when suddenly when they understand, yes, now it's time to buy and, uh, and by the time in the evening we should sell and these days and they know and they come and you know approach uh, the exchange and really the use cases which are using for just payments and, and uh, real uh, value transfer use cases of crypto when they come in they come in at all times right it's for because around to, to the use of that uh, time mm. say this time i want to send some money at this time i have to do it because i'm not going to wait for the price fluctuation now right, right. Uh, so the so small amount of people come for that, and the most otherwise are as soon as I see a, a change in price, uh, because you know we're linked to so many apps and wallets and things, you get this message, and just around that time is when you see uh, more buying happening, more selling happening, one of those twos. So you still understand that yes, it's more trade-driven excitement that is bringing in crypto, not necessarily any payment. Right. Uh, right. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a common common issue. Um, yeah, people have been trying that that type of uh, general consumer person, not not business type adoption for a long time, and it's it's hard to make it work. Um, I don't know if that's Gresham's law in in place, right? Like where people feel like it's valuable, so they don't want to spend it, um, or if it's other issues. But yeah, yeah, those. Gold. gold is also held more than uh, uh, anything else in terms of the asset class, right? They, they love their gold here in India. Uh, right. So they're, they're putting the Bitcoins also in the same uh, category. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's definitely a Gresham's Law issue, right? They, they feel like the, the gold is so valuable, so they just want to hold on to it. Um, yeah, and, and spend, spend the cheap stuff, I guess. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, looking forward to the global adoption, right? The more uh, the global adoption is happening, any place like uh, like the small town in Mexico, like Marco was saying. So, if there was a connection from there to India, they, they were like, oh, it's happening abroad. So, I think also I should also go for it. Uh, most people here in India do know about crypto because they have friends and family and also uh, their business partners abroad, and uh, they, they get their uh, first break from there. Uh, if if those things also help, then eventually they will be communicating with their uh, uh, counterparts abroad, so they may use crypto in future. So maybe uh, crypto will be used in remittances more in India than uh, in in merchants. Maybe that could be one of the things. Uh, and remittance in a way, just like personal use remittance, like people do it up and down for themselves. It's happening already. Uh, a small scale. Where when you compare it to in-house spending in the country to spending it for global transfers and you know value transfer system globally, that is uh, that way. Um, I see some are better. Uh, mm. I I have had uh, experience in in some uh, forums where I talk with international, you know, people who live in different countries outside of their home country and so forth. And when when people talk about remittances. I don't know, but often they they hate crypto, um, uh, and and I think part of it is that crypto has just developed such a bad reputation for uh, speculation and for uh, and for scams. There's literally a lot of scams in crypto, right? And so it just has a overall a, a bad reputation. It, it very it very much reminds me of um, back in the the late 1990s um, and 2000 of the the dot com boom, where there were so many scams, um, just shell companies, bad actors, just a lot of um, false kind of profit chasing where, where there wasn't actually a business model. There was just you know people speculating and and trying to take advantage of the the dot com bubble. Um, but but it reminds me of that time when when the actions of all the people doing um, 
not so great speculation and 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 that kind of thing they they messed up the reputation and so the dot com and the internet itself was you know was had this this kind of bad reputation of a just this this ugly place where messy things happen and it's not real it's just all these or or or, or the opposite of yeah go do that and you can get rich so yeah. it sounds very very similar it feels very similar to me to to what crypto is today so i hope we can get past that we can get to the place where uh people start to realize it is actually valuable for them to use there are things to do with it um and businesses also will realize that hey this is very useful to have this thing that we can use cross borders and not have to go through exchanges and and so forth and and hopefully it can get past that that stigma of that that well earned stigma in a lot of cases of of just pure speculation and um yeah i don't know what it's going to take to get past that so i hope to hear from you marco uh when you have some success with your town and and how things go with that that'll be great to hear and uh vikram yeah i i would try to help you guys to try to help zap it do what i can to to see and and i'd like to see zap it available in mexico also right so so that uh the people there could use it if if they need to do p2p exchange or something like that so maybe it's helpful there i don't know sure. all right so i we we came up on the, about 1 hour uh, after we started, so I'm going to to stop the recording soon. Was there anything you guys wanted to to say before we finish? Um, no, I'm I'm actually very excited about what Marco did in the video of uh, allowing uh, you know uh, competing with the Lightning Network. Very nicely done. Congratulations to you. It's a very good idea to bring in uh, the knowledge of uh, how you know uh, your on-chain crypto transactions, which you should be like the way it should be. I'm not going back again to the centralization on top of it. Uh, I have used Blue Wallet. Uh, me being in crypto for so long, I needed help to understand uh, Lightning at the time when I set it up. It's still not useful to me. It's still not useful to anybody here around because if I'm putting in money, that is Bitcoin only, which is in Lightning. I'm moving a small part of Bitcoin into the Lightning. The cost of moving that is itself is high. Not just I'm talking about the network of Bitcoin. I'm talking about 90% of the people in India who hold their Bitcoin only in an exchange and the exchange is charging you five, 10 times. And sometimes like in exactly today's price, they're charging you 30 times more in, in a network than the network fee of Bitcoin itself. To move your Bitcoin out of that exchange. Wow. Because the price of the uh, network fee has come down, it is 30 times more. Uh, otherwise there would be at least five times more than expensive times. <laughs> so they they artificially keep the fee high so it, it's always high it never goes low <laughs> because they do uh, fix the amount of uh, mm. when they charge you to right. right so right. it's it's point zero zero one two uh right now it's equal to some 45 dollars to 50 dollars wow. that's a lot of money and uh, if you're spending that amount of money to withdraw that Bitcoin into the Lightning and then trying to use the Lightning for that small fee that you're going to be, you know, using, it doesn't make sense. There's nowhere it makes sense. In in ways, uh, the acceptance is also not there on the opposite side of you trying to spend your uh, Lightning. So we, we should set up flip starters for people to onboard the Lightning. They can afford to onboard to. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be okay. service like <clears throat> pay with your visa, no? And I will send you the, the BTC LM Satoshis to your to your address. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's literally how it works. Like with the the um, what is it, the strike wallet and those guys, right? Like, yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Uh, totally, I need to share this one place I've identified where people are using crypto like crypto it should be is actually in Zapit Wallet. Because now Zapit Wallet limits you to use only Bitcoin Cash. Uh, it, it's not necessarily the most advantage, but at least here it's a great advantage because uh, with that Zapit Wallet, we have uh, collaborated, as you know already, like they can buy instantly from uh, Instructive Pro. Otherwise, they can always have the option of peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, with instant exchange, uh, Instructive Pro being there, sometimes when you see uh, the buying and selling of cryptos happening through Zapit wallets, it's mostly for 
to move value around. It, it's not anymore for trading. So that way, trading with an exchange, it's helping uh, to bring in those kind of users. And the one thing that I have seen with Bitcoin.com wallet is they don't have a sell option. Uh, I wish there was one is for those Bitcoin Cash users who get small payments and things. They're internally able to use that uh, uh, wallet itself to sell. So if Zapit was there in other states, which like I'm talking about other countries, maybe we could set up there also an instant exchange for people for the local fiat. Uh, it, oh, yeah, the, or the the P2P is already available, right? The, like like Marco was saying, WhatsApp, or whatever the P2P is already there. So. Yeah, Marco, maybe you should look into it. I don't know. The, um, I think most people don't realize all of the features that, that Zapit has. It's, it's, the Zapit wallet is, is, is impressive. It, it uses a lot of uh, actual non-custodial you know, escrow contracts and a lot of things inside that I don't think people realize that it does. It's very serious about doing things in a, in a very, uh, in aligned with crypto. Like it's very well aligned with actual crypto. It's, 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 it works very hard not to be custodial and things like that. So, yeah, you might want to to take a look at it. Maybe I would need some help from you guys also to any other wallet like Angels with uh, Satoshi's Angels, right? Part supporting maybe with them and the other threads and other wallets. If they can integrate with with an exchange like mine, maybe then uh, the users in India can at least get to INR with their uh, crypto, and maybe mm-hmm. with that they'll. Because we are also limiting our users to use more Bitcoin Cash than any other. Because it helps us too. When I receive payments, like when they sell from a wallet, if I'm receiving it with Bitcoin Cash, it makes it easy with the technology that we have. And I don't uh, lose any money in terms of dust. But with Ethereum, with Bitcoin, I do lose a little bit. Uh, so for my, uh, you know, an exchange to support a wallet, small amount makes better use in, in Bitcoin Cash. Mm. So maybe that uh, Bitcoin, all, all, there are many wallet users out in India, but they may not know about Bitcoin Cash's feature. Once we have this kind of facility and they start using it, they may understand that Bitcoin Cash makes more sense in that particular use case from the wallet also instantly, and they don't have to go to an exchange. Uh, well, okay. of course, to remove fees from exchange, it's it's pretty cheap. It's only about 15 cents per transaction. But to remove your Bitcoin or your, any of the cryptos, uh, that's very expensive. It just uh, they're making it hard. I think there was this one app uh, which used to allow people to understand which exchange had better price and things like that. And from where to where, if you sell and buy from which exchange to which exchange, it was giving you a profit. Uh, that particular thing has slowed down now, probably because the exchanges have realized and they've increased their uh, withdrawal fee. <laughs> I don't know. I'm... I mean, people have, I, I think the whole crypto world has already forgotten about Mt. Gox and, and you know, what can happen with custodial uh, setups. So maybe just the next generation has to get rugged and they, they all lose their money in some exchanges or something. I don't know what it's going to take, but yeah, hopefully people will eventually realize that, that they can just use it. Um, and then like the, the P2P features of Zapit and other wallets maybe will... Uh, will be more valuable, right? Where people realize, oh, I don't need to be on an exchange. I can use crypto off, off of an exchange, yeah. Okay, well, thank you guys very much for your time. It's good to see you again. And uh, maybe we'll talk again next week. Next week, I was thinking about talking about um, um, all the kind of infrastructure things, the things that we don't see, that other people don't see. I just wanted to, to talk about that a little bit next time. So, all right, well, it's good to talk to you guys. Take care. And uh, have a good week. Well, thank you very much. It was really nice. See you. Bye-bye.